right, we're live. How's everyone doing? So today is our third episode for live lessons. And I think our last one was in December. So that means that I've been not very good with keeping up with live lessons. But if you guys enjoy it, please write a comment below in the box. Let me know if you guys want me to do more of these. Um, they're kind of a cool concept. Uh, generally, I just talk about like one subject and just give you guys my thoughts on it to hopefully help you out. And actually, today we're talking all about how to practice. So let me give you a little story before we begin this lesson. So when I went to music college, I went to the Atlanta Institute of Music. And it was probably like the best experience of my life. I mean, I went into that school and I came out completely transformed as a musician, like a complete 180. I mean, it, it made everything that I do for the site possible. Like I would not have been able to build Rock Class 101, write these arrangements, um, teach the way that I teach without my experience there. So on day one of music college, guess what the thing they talked about was? They talked about practice. That was the first subject that we dived into. Before we begin anything about theory, before we begin anything about playing, it was all about practice. And on day one of college, I learned that I had practiced wrong, basically my entire playing life. So today we're gonna to be talking about what I learned there on day one and what I learned throughout my whole time in school and what I've applied since I graduated, because this was many years ago now. So um, today we're going to be talking about two things with practice. We're going to be talking about how to write a practice guide for yourself. And it's going to depend on if you're like a um, kind of like a play for fun hobby player, or if you're the second kind of person, uh, which is more of like, I want to get to the next level, which is kind of more of what um, our audience for Rock Class 101 is. It's kind of, you know, I want to understand what I'm playing more. I want to work on technique. I want to play more challenging songs, that kind of thing. So we're really going to focus on the second one. All right. And then the second part of this lesson is going to be how to practice our arrangements on Rock Class 101 the most efficient and effective way. So I'm going to be demoing a song. Uh, at the end of this video and then we're going to break it down and we're going to learn how i would approach practicing to learn it the best way possible so let's kick into a practice guide so again as i mentioned there's really just two types of um, people that play in my opinion there's the person that wants to just play for fun you know maybe they just want to play songs um, maybe they just want to sing a little bit so you know that that kind of approach is, you know, it's a leisure approach. It's you pick up the instrument and you kind of play when you want to or when you have time. But what we're really going to focus on is the second type of person. And like I said, this is what I think Rock Class 101 is all about. It's about getting to that next level when you're playing, really starting to understand what's happening, right? And for example, you know, I was just playing through basic chords. It's like understanding the fretboard, understanding, okay, this is a C chord. And it's not only C, B, C chord because Andrew told me this is a C chord, but why? Why is it a C chord? What are the notes that make a C? You know, and how does it all fit? You know, what is the theory behind it? So that's what we're going to start talking about. So to build a practice guide, you guys have to figure out what you want to get out of your playing. So let's go ahead and just talk about that first example. Let's say we want to understand the fretboard more well what do we need to understand the fretboard we need to understand music theory a little bit right we need to understand the basics of theory we need to know you know what what a major scale is how to harmonize that scale we need to understand intervals right and then we need to actually start learning how to apply that theory so maybe that's one area you want to work on maybe another area could be you know, I see some of these challenging songs on the site um, and they've got a lot of technique in their playing, you know, maybe there's just a lot of finger picking going on. That could be another area that you guys can work on, right? It's just technique, but break it down into a specific thing, right? And then the, let's talk about other areas that you could go into, which would be, you know, say, for example, you want to write your own material. That's going to be 
uh, composing, right? And then if you really get into composing, you're probably going to want to learn how to actually write out the music, right? So you're going to want to work on notation skills, right? And that could be writing uh, standard music as well as tablature, because let's face it, most of us will read tablature, so you probably want to offer both things. So the point that I'm trying to get at is that you guys would need to figure out exactly what you want to work on, right? So let's just take a few of these ideas that I threw out. So let's say you have an hour a day to practice, right? And that hour of day, let's split up into sections. Let's say the first section is going to be technique. So you should probably spend about one third of that hour just working on technique. And it could be different techniques. So let's say it's a Monday and you want to work on what we we're talking about, finger picking. So on Monday, let's say you take a three finger approach for finger picking, right? So I could use these fingers and all I'm just going to do is I'm going to go three, two, four, one. And I'm just using three finger approach. So I could pick a song or I could work on just exercises. It doesn't really matter. I can move around. I can move around from three, five, seven on string one. I could just play one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. I could just do exercises, kind of work on um, three finger approach. So let's say that's one third of my practice time for a Monday, right? So you kind of want to just develop um, exercises or look for exercises online. We've got some in our freebie section for right hand uh, finger picking. Um, that's a good place to start. You could look on songs that we have on the site that use that approach and you can just focus like one third of your practice time just on finger picking. And then I'm always getting emails about like hammer ons. <laughs> Right, so you could work on, maybe Tuesday, you could work on a hammer-on exercise or a song that uses hammer-ons a lot. So that gives you kind of a structure for the first third of your practice. Now, let's say the next third is going to be understanding the fretboard. You know, we we're talking about C chord, understanding chords and stuff. Let's give you a real-life example. So, of let's see, a few weeks ago, I went to see a uke show, and... There are about eight people on stage, and they were playing um, Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash. And everyone's just playing the same chords. They're all playing the stock basic chords, right? And, you know, what made it interesting, of course, was they were singing the song over it. Everyone had great voices and stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, they're all playing the same chords, the same basic chords that they learned on day one of you playing. And it didn't really add to the element of the music. There was no death to it. Um, so if I was in your guys' boat, I would start thinking, well, how can I be different than what the normal people do? You know, if they always are playing these basic chords, they're always doing the same thing. What can I do that makes it different? And, you know, that was the inspiration for, I think it was two weeks ago that I put out um, episode two for our concept lessons. Right, where we took a uh, just a basic chord progression, which was a one, five, six, four, and C. So that's C, G, A minor, F. So if I just play these basic chords. Cool, nothing really um, unique is happening, right? That's what nine out of ten players do at jams or at shows and stuff, right? Is they play those basic chords and they sing over it. So let's say you want to start getting into expanding past that. Well, that lesson talked all about utilizing the caged method. And the cage method is a very popular method for uh, guitar players. They use it all the time. And all it means is it's taking those chords that we're calling out. Um, for you, it's different. We're replacing the E with the um, F chord. So it's just taking the C chord the A chord, the G chord, um, and the F chord for you, and then the D chord. And we're moving those shapes up. So like I said, if we're playing a song, let's say we're just hanging on C for right now. We're playing a song that has a C chord, and everyone in your jam is playing the basic C. You want to be a little bit different. Well, why don't you use that cage method, right? So studying that cage method 
teaches you how to play those car chords with a harmony. So if we all make a G chord real quick, let's make a G chord and let's just move it up the neck until it becomes a C chord. So if I take G and I go up a whole step, so I'm going to four, five, four, and then it becomes an A. If I go up another whole step, so it's six, seven, six, it becomes a B. And if I go up a half step, we finally get to where we want. So that's seven, eight, seven. And that becomes our higher voice in C using that G chord shape, right? So that could be another third of your practice is figuring out, you know, what could I do um, that could be a real world application? You know, how if, if I go to jams all the time and we're all playing, you know, I'm Yours by Jason Mraz, which is that same chord progression or any, there's a thousand songs that go one, five, six, four, you know, how can I be different than all my peers that are playing? Well, maybe you could work on that cage method for a third of your practice time, right? And learn how to move chords up higher. If I, I mean, just listen to the difference. If for the first chord, if we're just hanging on C, everyone's playing that, but you're going. It's just adding that one chord was completely separates you from everything that I had seen and nine times out of 10 of what people play. Just taking that one chord, playing it higher, makes you different than what most people do. So, you know, it's not that theory has to be so hard. Um, it's more of figuring out the direction that you want to go in and spending the time to learn it and then figuring, figuring out how I can apply it. So now we've talked about two things. We've talked about um, basically working on technique for a third of the time and then another third working on theory, but theory that's not like, you know, scroll, like skull crushing. Like I really got to buckle down. It's more of theory that can be applied um, basically right away once you get a hang of it. So let's talk about the last third of your hour of practicing. Um, now I'll give you guys a question that we got in music school. And the question was, what is the most important part of being a musician? Is it like your technique like we were playing? Is it, is it you know, learning as many songs as possible? Is it understanding all the theory in the world? What is the most important part of being a musician? So just think about it for a second, and then I'll tell you what they told us. Okay, so none of us got it right. And here's the answer. It's your ear. So ear training is extremely important, right? So when I'm writing these arrangements for you guys every week, you know, what I'm doing is really thinking of how can I make it sound the best way possible? You know, how can I voice my chords throughout the neck? How can I make it sound the prettiest you know, and all that came down to ear training. So let's say one third of your practice now will be ear training. Okay. And how do we practice on ear training? Like that's just kind of a, a weird thing. Well, start easy, you know, like for example, let's just talk about chords and we're going to talk about there's three types of chords, right? So there's a major, a minor chord and a dominant chord. And they all sound different. So all we're going to do is we're going to take, um, let's just take G. Let's talk about major and minor real quick. So one of them sounds happy and one of them sounds sad. So you guys will have to figure out which one is a happy and which one is a sad. So we have this chord and we have this chord, right? So the first one is a basic G. It's a very uplifting sound. Right? There's our key note for that chord. Now, if I flat that note, we get a very sad sound, right? So we have a happy is a major, and we have minor is a sad sound. So one thing that you guys can work on is just kind of like hearing the difference between simple chords like that, right? Um, kind of just training your ear to recognize, you know, is this a major sound? Is this a minor sound? 
And then from there, it just keeps going on, right? Um, basically, when you first start with ear training, you're talking about intervals. An interval is the distance between two notes. So if you really, really want to buckle down and learn ear training, then I would be studying intervals. And there's actually a great website out there that has an interval, interval ear training um, like program that you can log on and use. Uh, it's called musictheory.net. You can find the interval ear training. And basically what it does is it takes two notes and it just plays two notes at a time. And then you have to tell which kind of note it is. You know, is it a minor third? Is it a perfect fourth, perfect fifth? And the whole point of developing your ear is that it's the background behind all of music, right? Because think of music, it's three parts. Music is your melody, your harmony, and your rhythm. If you really develop your ear, then you're going to excel in these three parts, right? Because your ear is what's behind everything, right? Your ear is behind the melody. Your ears behind the harmony and your ears behind the rhythm, right? So let's talk a little bit about those three subjects real quick. So if I was to give you an example song, so there's Norwegian Wood by the Beatles, right? This is uh, one of our arrangements on the site. It's a very simple song. It's only two chords. It's a G and an F chord, right? But we're going to work on our ear training for a second. We're going to differentiate those three parts. So the first part we have is melody. So the melody is the singing, right? I once had a girl, or should I say she once had me. So if I play a little bit of that melody, it's... There's our melody, right? And the chord, think of the chord as the harmony. The chord is just a G. A quick change to F and a quick back to G. So those are the first two parts of music, melody and harmony. Now the last part is the part that people really, really need to focus and buckle down on, which is our timing or our rhythm, right? So if I count out this song, I'm just going to go one, two, and three, one, two, three, one, two, and three. So I have one, two, and three, one, two, three, one, two, and three, one, two, three, one, two, and three, one, two, three, one, two, and three, one, two, and three. So starting to get a little bit of uh, an understanding um, of how all those three parts fit together, that could be part of your ear training as well. You know, it's not only tell me the distance between these notes, tell me if this is major or minor, it expands past that. And that's that example of that playing along with that song is the real world application of those ear training. So now we have three um, areas for our practice guide. So uh, the first one was working on technique and you can do different technique every day. Um, then the second one was figuring out a little basic theory and how to apply it. So we talked about cage method today. And then the third one was um, working on ear training and developing your ear. And our real world application was to develop our ear to differentiate the difference between melody, harmony, and rhythm. So that kind of gives you guys just one idea of, of a practice guide that you can do. So it, having a practice guide gives you structure to your playing, right? We think of a guy that goes to a gym and think of another guy that goes to the gym. So there's two guys. One guy goes and he does this for I don't know, 10 reps. Then he does this for 10 reps. And then he runs on the treadmill. But the other guy goes and he has a plan, right? He's only going to work on back and bicep today. And then he's going to go back tomorrow and he's going to do cardio. Right? And then he's going to go the next day. He's going to do legs, right? Who do you think is going to progress faster? The guy that just does whatever, just to go, or the guy that has a plan and a structure to his practice? Probably the guy that has a structure. So that's what I'm suggesting is to think about what you want to get out of your playing and just build a practice guide that complements that and helps you get to where you want to go. So hopefully today I give you a few ideas of things to work on. 
Now, our second part of this lesson is going to be how to practice songs on Rock Class 101. So if you're more of that hobby player, play for fun, which is totally cool, and you just want to log on and learn songs and just kind of, you know, de-stress and just play for fun, then that's totally fine. Let's actually use the song that we already talked about, which is um, Norwegian Wood. So I'm going to go ahead and just play through uh, the first part of it, and I'm going to give you guys tips. So let's say you were learning this song on the site. So these tips are going to be the best, uh, most efficient and effective way to get this stuff down. So uh, again, I'm going to play just the first part. All right, actually, that is the first half. Let's break it down even more. So there's the first um, section. So. If I was you guys approaching a song, I would break it into parts, right? Think of that as part one. And then we could think of part two as. And then part three. And then part four. So instead of playing. Right, everything and speeding through it and trying to get everything down in one time, you can take a song and break it into sections. That's going to make it so much easier to learn. So that's how I would approach it. So if we were to take the first part, I would just do this. I would do repetition first, which means that we're going to, like we said, we break it down into small parts and we're going to repeat it over and over again. So that first section out of four, you can just repeat and loop. If you can play it like that five times in a row, perfect and clean, then you're good. And I would slow it down as slow as you need and work it up to speed gradually. So, it's fine that it's that slow, right? It doesn't matter. The main thing is that your timing is on and that all your notes are very clean. Just remember that speed comes in time, no pun intended, right? So once you get that first out of four down, try the second phrase. And loop that. Right? And same thing. Once you get it down five times, and you probably got it, right? Then you can take that first and the second phrase and play it together. can loop that section right, and so if some of these chord changes are hard let's say the first um, change uh, from the ending of uh, the first phrase to the second phrase is laying flat with this finger to a regular G just practice that change right but put it in like a timing like if I count one two three four one two three four right and then gradually speed it up so Transitions are what a lot of people have trouble with. And transition is going from phrase one to phrase two, right? So work on the transition section as well, you know, and repeat that and loop it and make it clean. So that'll help break things down even more for you. So once you get the first two down, then you can do the same thing with uh, phrase three and then do phrase four and then do three and four. And then finally you can do one through four and play the entire um, melody or the A melody for that tune. So that gives you basically the first step of practice, which is repetition. Let's talk about the second part of practice, which is known as reinforcement. So what is reinforcement? This is the one that most people scratch their head. Repetition is pretty easy to understand. Reinforcement means that we're going to be continually working on it. That means that let's go, actually, let's go back to that reference of the guy at the gym, right? So there's two guys at the gym, one guy with the plan, he keeps going back to the gym and continually works on it, right? Now, what happens when he continually works on it? He's going to develop um, muscles, right? He's going, he's going to get stronger. So if we continually work on our playing of this tune and 
or, or any of the practice that we've talked about today, you know, practice on the technique, we continually come back to it, then we're going to develop what's known as deeply embedded skills, right? Think of like developing um, the stretch for this song. It's like a little bit of a stretch, right? That doesn't happen in day one, right? But as you keep working on it, gradually your stretch increases for your left hand, right? But you've got to keep working on it. So things don't happen in, in one day. What do they say? Rome wasn't built in one day, right? So same thing with your playing. You know, you're not going to become incredible in one day or one week. But if you keep working on it, you will. And you'll be amazed by your growth. So the second part is reinforcement, guys. That means that we always got to continually come back and work on it and then push ourselves. Once we get that down, take another tune that's a step harder, you know, just a little bit harder. Work on that. So that way your skills keep gradually increasing, you know, so you want to continually challenge yourself. And that's what our site brings, you know, it's the people that have played this their whole life and they're bored and they want to get to that next level, right? So now we know the first two parts of practice, repetition, looping it, repeating over and over again, reinforcement, coming back to it, and really helping to develop those deeply embedded skills. And now let's talk about our last part of practice, so number three, which is going to be evaluation. So eventually we got to get to the point where we evaluate our results, right? So one way to do it is take your phone or any device, doesn't matter, whatever, something that records, and just prop it up, record yourself playing what you've been working on, and then sit back, listen, right? And just listen to see if it sounds like you want it to, you know? And if there's something off, then make the adjustments needed to, to make it better, right? So for example, I was uh, working on a couple songs recording for the site this week. Um, one of them is the song from Zelda video game. And I shot a, a performance video yesterday and not like that. So that was just a little bit of it. And when I listened back to my recording, um, to be honest, I wasn't like really feeling it. I wasn't really in the mood. And, you know, I played all the notes right, but there was no emotion to it you know i was just trying to get it done and when listening back i said wow i really need to be in the mood to record this and perform it so i can get that feeling because it's a beautiful song right so for me when i listened back for my evaluation i said this one has no fill in it i need to get into it more i'm going to do it another day when you know i'm in the right mindset you know and a lot of times too i'll record stuff and i'll listen back um got what was it it was a uh, stand by me i think i recorded it the first take or second take and then i spent 90 minutes working on it after i watched my performance to fix things that i didn't hear so recording yourself is a great way to evaluate it to make it sound the way that you want it to sound so keep that in mind so our three parts of practice are repetition over and over again reinforcement coming back to it continually working on it to develop those long lasting skills and then evaluation to see how your results were. So hopefully guys, that gives you um, a bunch of ideas today for how to practice, right? We talked about a practice guide and we talked about um, how to practice the songs, break them down and learn them in the most efficient and effective way. Um, the tunes that we do for Rock Class 101, but all this stuff can be applied to whatever you're learning. It doesn't only have to be for Rock Class 101. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little insight into practice. This is the stuff we learned on day one of music college, and it completely changed how I practice from there on out. So again, guys, if you enjoy these live lessons, leave a comment, let me know, and I'll try to do more than one every 10 months. Just let me know. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you in our next one. Thanks.